sanctity of whatever it is even more than you say. And what I want you to do, I want you, I'm not trying to be a wimp out of it. I'm not going to wimp my way out. I want you to shoot me, okay? But I don't want you to shoot me with that little dinky bullet. I want you to shoot me with a humongous bullet. More and more humongous than a rifle from which it's fired. And you, I want you to pull a trigger. What's going to happen? <laughs> Who's better off, the target or the shooter? What's going to happen to that guy when he fires? He goes, oh, we're going to walk around the rest of his life like this. One of his eagles gone, right? <laughs> Rockets. First day I was here talking to you guys, I said, how does a rocket move? And remember, we all get in a swimming pool together, and we get in the pool, and I pushed against the edge of the pool, and I rocketed across the pool, right? And I said, is that how a rocket works? And you guys said, yep, sure is, Hewitt, sure is. And I said, nope, it ain't. And you says, oh, wait a minute, what's going on? Let's talk about that now. How does a rocket move? What makes a rocket go to the moon? Does it push against the launching, launching pad so hard that it bounces up and just keep going, 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 like throwing a bat against a ball against a super ball against a, a ground and have it bounce to the moon? Is that how a rocket works? What pushes on a rocket, gang? Like this gun. That gun's being pushed the opposite to the direction the bullet's going, yeah? If I took that gun and I held it down like this and I fired it, would the gun kick up? And after it fires one bullet, it fired another, would it go kick, kick, would it kick twice? Let's suppose I have a machine gun, honey. And I put that machine gun on like a piece of piano wire. See the piano wire stretched tight here? See? See, it's nice and tight, okay? Twang. Now I put that machine gun on a couple of screw eyes, okay? And I take the machine gun and I pull the trigger. Brrrr! What's gonna happen to the machine gun? Can you guys see it climbing up? It's gonna recoil away from the bullets it fires. The gun pushes the bullet down. The bullet pushes the gun up. Now, a rocket fires bullets, too. Made out of lead? No, molecules of gas. Fires them fast or slow? With a lot of force or a little force? A lot of force. So those, those gas particles are fired out. Boom, they're pushed out, right? So the rocket pushes the gas down. You guys can finish it up. You Now you know how a rocket gets to the moon. See, people used to think that the rocket pushes against the air. In fact, the father of rocketry, Robert Goddard, said back in the 20s, hey gang, the time is coming when the human race will get to the moon with rockets, not airplanes, rockets. And he was belittled and he was humiliated by the press. And one, one press person says, Dr. Gordon obviously doesn't know, his, doesn't know his science because if he studies books, he'll find out that between here and the moon is a vacuum and there's no air for the rocket to push against. So a rocket could never travel in a vacuum. And that's what they said. What do you guys think about that? Can a rocket travel in a vacuum? You know a rocket and travel in a vacuum because this is what? This is the, 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 almost the year 2000. So it's the times. But back then, you know, 80 years ago, 70, 80 years ago, people didn't know about these things so much. It wasn't part of the general consciousness. In fact, Goddard did this for the press. He did the following experiment. He put a pistol inside a vacuum chamber. And he pulled a vacuum. So there's no air in there. Drop a little feather, boom, fall just as fast as anything else. A vacuum in there. Then what he did is he had a little mechanism whereby he could pull a little trigger outside, a little stick would come up and pull the trigger of the gun, and he showed that when the bullet went down, the gun went, and he says that's how a rocket works. The bullet doesn't need any air to push against to make the gun go back up. It's straight, straight Newtonian physics. Rocket pushes down on gas, Gas pushes up on rocket. Pew, there you are, and you can go all to the moon if you, all the way to the moon if you keep pushing. Little story goes with that. You know, human beings went to the moon, 1969. Before 1969, they were talking about going to the moon. My brother had a dear friend, Perry Hunter, sort of like a scientific type guy. And Perry Hunter and my brother used to get in arguments about this whole Apollo mission as to whether or not humans could get to the moon. And I remember one time overhearing an argument between my brother Dave and Perry Hunter. And Perry Hunter was claiming, no way, no way a human being is going to get in a rocket and get to the moon and come back. No way. It's all press. It's all a farce. It's all Hollywood. They can't do that. And my brother says, Perry, how do you know they can't do that? 
And Perry said, because I'm a marksman, and I know what it is to take a rifle and get 200 yards away from a target and boom, hit that target dead on. I know what that is. And when you talk about going 240,000 miles away, I don't care what kind of high tech they got. They're not going to aim that rocket properly. They're going to miss. Perry didn't understand at all how it happens. Gang, they don't aim a rocket to the moon and <laughs> fire and hope they aimed it right and <laughs> it hits. That's not the way it happens. How does a rocket go to the moon? They could never do that without high-speed computers. They fire the rocket in the general direction of the moon. <laughs> now, as the rocket's going out, the rocket sights on the stars, sights on the moon, sights around, and, and, and answers the following question, where am I? The rocket can ask that question and answer it. Then the rocket says, what's the best way from here to the moon from where I am? Not where I was. From where I am, what's the best path? That path is calculated. Little rock, push it on that particular course. Then it goes, a little while later, boom, rocket, where am I? Okay, what's the best possible way to get to the moon given where I am? Then plots a whole new, new path. It isn't like there's one path and if it gets off the course, it tries to get back on. It doesn't do that. It plots a new path all the time. Keep getting closer and closer and closer, plot new paths and follow those new paths. Whip, boom, bullseye. That's how they do it. So if you're ever in life going from one place to another, you say, I want to go to here. You get off the path. You don't have to get back on the path. What do you do? You say, hey, where's the, what's the path, the best path from where I am? Not where I was back there when I was 16 or 17 or 18 or wherever like that. So you go by steps. You plot a new path all the time. You take a piece of paper. The piece of paper you say to the heavyweight champion of the world, hey, champ. Do me something, I give you a million dollars. You say, what? Hit this piece of paper with 50 pounds of force. Is he gonna collect a million dollars? Get the heavyweight champ of the world to throw his best right hand. Whoa. Hit that paper. Hit that paper with 50 pounds of force. Get a million dollars. Can he do it? Can he? Can it be done? You can't hit that paper with 50 pounds of force. You know why? You can't get that kind of interaction with that little dinky piece of paper. You can't get it. This paper is not capable of giving you a 50 pound interaction. You can't hit this paper any harder than a paper hit back on you. So you can't do it. That's what Gandhi was talking about. You can't be pushed any harder than you push back. Can't do it. Now take the paper and hold it against the wall. <laughs> Boom, can you get 50 pounds on a paper? Oh yeah, you can get 50 pounds on a paper, okay? Because what are you doing? You're pushing against the wall now. And the wall can push back with you 50 and squash the paper and it'd be 50, huh? But just on itself, you can't do it. Ain't that neat? So what are we illustrating here? You can't exert a force on something else unless that force exerts the same amount back on you. Ain't that neat? That's Newton's third law gang. Yeah. You got it? Here's a horse pulling a cart. And on the cart is a farmer over here. Okay. The farmer's yelling at the horse. And this cart's all loaded up with bags of bananas or something the farmer's going to bring to town, okay? And now, what the farmer says to the horse is, horse, pull the cart. I want to go to town. And the horse says, wait a minute. No sense me pulling on the cart. Because if I pull on the cart, the cart's going to pull on me. And if I pull hard, the cart will pull back hard. And however hard a force I exert over here, there'll be an equal and opposite force pulling back this way. The forces will cancel out. So we might as well just stay here. <laughs> the farmer says, no, pull, pull, pull. I guarantee if you pull, we'll go to town. And the horse says, but I don't see it. Every action is a reaction. How are we going to get to town? How does the system move, gang? It's true that for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. Why don't they cancel out and nothing happens? Think about that. It'll make for a good weekend. All right? OK, physics.